somebody telling you what to do. You shouldn't be telling a man that you dating all the stuff that the last man put you through. Hey y'all, hey, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am Latricia Nicole. If you are new here, if you are one of my 560, I believe we were at this morning. Welcome back. I'm so excited. We are on the road to 1K. I am so grateful for each and every one of you guys. And I am just so excited to be growing my channel. So as you can tell from the title of the video, I'm gonna be giving you guys five little tips to contribute to a success, successful marriage. No, this is not like etched in stone. This is not a you have to do. I am really big on do what works for you and your family, what works for you and your marriage. But these are just five little things that can help you along the way if you are new in marriage, if you are struggling in your marriage you know, all the things marriage. I am really big on marriage. I'm really big on finding love or allowing love to find you because that's how it happens most of the time. So if you are not new here and you watched my last vlog, then you know I touched a little bit in the vlog about being a submissive wife and how I am a proud submissive wife. <gasps> So in the preview to the channel, I posted it on some of my other platforms and I'm going to be honest, I kind of got a few little side eyes. I got a few questions about pe from people that don't know me personally, so I understood. Um, and so let me just start before we get into the five things to help contribute to a successful marriage by saying submissiveness does not equate to abuse does not equate to disrespect so when i say submissive i'm talking about from a biblical aspect i am not talking about somebody telling you what to do and if you don't do it you're in trouble that's not what i'm talking about no so that's my disclaimer so without any further ado let's get into these five tips to contribute to a successful marriage number one know your role idealistically when you get married you come from one background one family your spouse comes from another so the upbringings the upbringings are different and you are merging two totally different lifestyles so before you get married you want to know your role in the marriage what i did to know my role in this marriage is i looked at what the bible said what what does the bible say my role is i'm not gonna freestyle i'm gonna give it to y'all straight from the bible so this is my beautiful word bible i love this bible because it's kind of like a study bible it has room for like notes and stuff on the side i got it from amazon i'll link it below if anybody is interested um so in my last vlog i did post ephesians 5 and 22 but if we all know how to count before 22 there's a 21 so i know sometimes people take um you know wives are supposed to submit to their husband and they just take that and they run with it right but the bible in ephesians 5 and 21 says to Sub submit to one another out of the reverence for christ so i touched on this a little bit before and um all of these steps is taking into account that you are in the marriage that you are supposed to be in. There's no shade, no tea to nobody. I'm not judging. We listen, but we don't judge. Because like I said before, this is my second marriage. So I understand. So I'm just going to say that and we'll leave it at that. Because anything beyond that can be a whole nother video. Okay? Okay. But... Um, I know that sometimes people like to say, oh, you know, the wife, is, the wife is supposed to submit to the husband. And it absolutely does say that. But before you get to that part, the Bible specifically in the instructions for a Christian household. And this is the NIV version of the Bible, by the way. Um, instructions for Christian households. Before it gets to anything about what the wife is supposed to do, it says submit to one another. Okay. So it's 
not a one-sided thing marriage is not one-sided marriage is not of course the man is supposed to be the head of the household but that does not mean that the wife has no say so that the wife has no identity that everything is about the husband so before you go in it is always good to know your role know what what does the bible say about marriage period not just you as a wife but just in being open and transparent Yes, because in Ephesians 25 and 22, it does say, Wives, submit yourself to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything, in everything. That's what the Bible say. I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. Okay. Um, but it also says here, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. Know your role. The, the Bible clearly writes out what a hus how a husband is supposed to treat his wife but it also writes out how um the wife is supposed to treat or um react or submit to your husband and i can go on and on and on about submissiveness but i will say this one of the things that i have learned in my marriage is that a man who truly loves you a man who truly loves god is not you don't have to worry about submitting to the wrong things you don't have to worry about oh he's telling me what to do oh because you know that a man who truly loves you only wants the best for you and that leads us into tip number two which is respect this is gonna be real brief baby there is no successful relationship period whether it be a friendship with your family in a marriage without respect you have to respect one another but one of the things about marriage that i have grown to learn is a part of respecting one respecting one another is not allowing anybody else to disrespect your spouse either when you start allowing other people to disrespect your spouse you open up the door for the marriage to just be full of chaos so that obviously I think goes without saying um you know when you get to infidelity or you know allowing family members to overstep their boundaries into your relationship you there cannot be any tolerance for disrespect in a successful marriage there just can't and one of the things about my marriage is I came into the marriage with three children um so the respect factor has to be there for my husband to my children but also to my children towards my husband and we can talk about blending families a whole nother day um but that is a big thing you cannot have a successful marriage without there being respect you know there's no room for disrespect in my marriage nobody's going to disrespect my husband um my husband is definitely not about to allow anybody to disrespect me not even in the smallest sense so that's the other thing. Make sure that you have respect. Number three, be an individual. Now, I get a lot of flack from this from my friends. I'm going to be honest with you um, because at the very beginning of my marriage and probably at the beginning of my relationship, honestly, somewhere along the way, I lost myself as an individual. I, that's just me being honest and transparent. I just wanted to be with my man all the time. I wanted to do whatever my man did. My man, my man, my man. And that just became unhealthy. It did. Um, you have to be able to have a life outside of your relationship. Now, you still have to respect your spouse. So I'm not saying go out there and create a side life. That's not that's not at all what I mean. But what are the things that you like to do outside of being a wife? What are the things that you like to do outside of being a mom? Like what are the things that you like to do? And one of the things that I learned in therapy is if somebody asks you to introduce yourself, what are the first three things that you're going to name about yourself? And that's kind of where you see if 
where you stand as an individual. If you get the blabbing off about what the kids are doing, how successful your husband is, then there is a pretty good chance that you put yourself to the back burner. Now, granted, my marriage is my very first ministry. However, I have to be able to pour into Latricia and able to, so that I'm able to pour into my marriage, so that I'm able to pour into my family. So, you know, it's really important to find the things that you like doing that are healthy and respectful and make sure that you're pouring into those things so that you are healthy as an individual. Number four is the really important, especially if you have kids. Baby, to have a successful marriage, you have to still date one another. You have to. Now, this is something that my husband and I are getting back to. So, um, my husband and I dated for seven years before we got married. I think, yeah, seven years before we got married. Um, I, I'm just going to say this, baby. I know that, you know, there's a lot of chatter around. Um, it don't take a man that long to figure it. No, it don't take a man that long to figure out if he want to make you his wife. But I will say this. We did not have a traditional situation. We had children and my husband and I dated for a year before he even met my children. So there what once again, my husband respects me. My husband always wants what's best for me. And my husband knew prior to us being married that I had children. And so at the time, well, not at the time, just in general, what's best for me is what's best for my kids as well. So he was very, very, very clear on, I know that you're the woman that I want to marry. But before we get married, we have to make sure that the kids are comfortable in the situation. And I love him so much for that. I respect him so much for that. I'm so glad that I didn't listen to society because there were people that would be like, oh, well, what are y'all doing? How long is it going to take? And this is why I said at the beginning, like, yeah, there are steps that I'm giving, but you also have to do what works for you. Because I truly believe that our marriage wouldn't be where it's at now had we gotten married earlier on. I said all of that to say, we dated for a very long time. We went on dates every single week, sometimes two times a week. Like we, he, like my husband was ask, calling me, asking me out on dates, picking me up. I'm talking about years into the relationship because we didn't live together. Um, and so we got married and when we got married, we got married at the beginning of COVID, but we would still date. By this time, my children are teenagers, right? So he and I would date. We would go out with the kids. We would incorporate the kids into date night. You know, we would have date night at home. And then, baby, in 2021, we ended up having a baby. And JC is my husband's first biological child. He's my, he, she is my fourth child. And I will say this, when I tell you my husband is hands-on super dad with that little girl, he is hands-on super dad with that little girl. So much so that in the midst of him becoming a biological parent, us getting, us having a new baby with having older children, we really stopped dating because the time just wasn't there. Or we would, well, I'm going to say this, the time was there, we were not putting forth the effort to make time and honestly that kind of caused a rift in our marriage um not like a divorce rift <laughs> but um it did cause an issue and he and I were able to sit down and we know now that we have to date so we use the resources that we have we utilize our village our parents we um our parents will watch the kids while watch the baby while we go on um on the we while we incorporate dates into our marriage and that has made a tremendous it has played a tremendous role in improving um the state of our marriage honestly so one of the things that we know now is that we can never stop dating each other we can never and it's so funny and i love this because we are married uh we're going into year five of marriage and he still asks me on dates and I love it. I'm talking about like text messages, like asking, like not just rolling over in the bed saying, babe, you know, we going such and such on, like he still asks me out on dates and I absolutely love it. Like my husband still gives me butterflies and we have been together 
um 12 years and he still gives me butterflies and i love that i love it i love it i love it and that's one thing that we can never lose again like we have to still date and so i encourage anybody even if you are engaged to be married if you're dating to be married if you are married make sure that you are still dating and dates don't have to cost a lot of money baby we have had get the kids out the house we're gonna have date night at home we sometimes if we have date night with the kids sometimes we don't have a sitter we'll order steak from texas row house to go and we will sit and we will we will have a date that brings me to the fifth and final tip which is communicate i spoke a little bit about this when i talked about us kind of losing our little sweet spot with dating how did we fix that we communicated i remember sitting my husband down saying boy when the last time we went on a date when 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 let you know and so you have to be able to communicate one of the things i remember when we were dating is that i was not transparent with my husband about fin my finances because i was embarrassed honestly i just had been through so much and i felt like this is a whole a video for i just it just hit me this is a video for a whole nothing i didn't feel like i was worthy of the love that he was giving me so i felt like i had to if if i presented a flaw that that was going to take that love away if that makes sense i just didn't feel like i was worthy of that type of love i had never experienced that before and honestly i didn't think that i i didn't think that i deserved it you know so many people in society had told me um certain things about myself so it was certain things that i was purposely not communicating with him <laughs> this is so funny because when i finally communicated it i'll never forget my husband was like so like it was a big deal to me but it wasn't a big deal to him when i finally told him he was like okay and my husband has this thing now where anything i go through if i come to him and i'm like i'm the worrier of of the marriage and if i come to him and i'm like hey oh my god you know i'm communicating with him something that i think is a problem his response is always it's okay trish we're gonna get through it together we got each other we're gonna get through it together so you have to communicate even the things that you feel like you are afraid or embarrassed to communicate make sure that you have a open line of communication there should be nothing that anybody else should be able to come and tell your spouse about you that they don't already know i'll say that again there should be nothing that an outside person should be able to come and tell your spouse about you that they don't already know you have to communicate now you have to have the hard conversations you have to have the uncomfortable conversations you have to have the embarrassing conversations y'all i had so many things that i was so embarrassed by but i love this man so much and this man loved me so much and i was like if i tell him this if i talk to him about this you know he ain't gonna want me no more and that's why it's important to make sure that that person is really your person is really the person that god has for you because baby none of that matter none of that matter you're gonna find when you had a right person unconditional means no condition can change the love and i'm about to tear up and once i started to communicate and let me let me say this one last thing about communication i saw this online one day where somebody said you shouldn't be telling a man that you dating all the stuff that the last man put you through and my response to that is you're dating the wrong person then there is nothing that you should have been put through or gone through in a previous situation that you can't communicate with your person that you can't communicate with your spouse nothing and the rationale behind the person saying that in their defense was because you're giving them the opportunity to put you through the same thing well if if that's the person for you if that's the person god has for you no matter what conversation you having with them what secrets or history you're telling them is gonna make them switch up how they love you so so i didn't want this to be a long video i hope those tips help somebody 
if they all didn't you know i am once again really big on do what works for you but i hope that you could take something from those tips and apply it to your relationship or apply it to your marriage um or even apply it to your friendships honestly or your relationships with people in your family um because i think that those things are kind of all across the board so if you have made it this far in my video thank you so much for watching make sure that you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so and i will see you guys next time bye